Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for visiting my channel. It really helps out the channel if you'd hit the like button uh, before you leave or if you leave a comment. Those things really both help. Thank you in advance for that. I've been exploring some various art periods. Uh, we're going to do three different beginning style rings and they all kind of fall within this Bauhaus uh, school of art. Uh, I actually discovered these designs when I was looking into Bauhaus and uh, I thought they were kind of cool so I thought I'd uh, attempt to make all three of them and I think they'd make for great beginning projects. So. Uh, if you're a beginner, this might be a good video for you. Uh, before we get started, though, I'd like to uh, thank my YouTube subscribers. We just passed uh, 6,800, which is fantastic. Uh, we're approaching 7,000. That's wonderful. Thank you guys for all your support. I'd also like to thank my patrons over on Patreon. Uh, they're paying for my premium uh, content over there. And I really love the community that they've developed. And I enjoy... Um, talking with them and uh, chatting up jewelry stuff. So thank you guys not only for your financial um, generosity but for your generosity of ideas. I really love the community we formed over there. With all those things being said, let's get started on these rings. I usually draw things up in my design idea book here and these are available on my merch store incidentally. You can see a lot of the designs I've made in recent videos in here. And some that haven't come out yet. There we go. Okay. Uh, so the three ones that I found as uh, samples of Bauhaus jewelry online were um, this one here, which is very simple, but I think kind of elegant looking. Uh, this one that has just two kind of U-shaped uh, bands with a, a hovering a sheet of metal in between it, kind of poised in between there. And then third, uh, this one, which is kind of like this one, in that it's got a disc of metal in between two bars, but uh, this one's just got a different shape, and I kind of thought it was fun. And I think I might use copper for the disc on this one just to change it up. First, though, we'll do this one, and uh, I think I'm going to use 18 gauge uh, sterling sheet for this. The idea behind this one, I think, is going to involve not too much effort. Uh, first, you just have to cut it to the length of the piece that you want and then we're going to cut a slot opposite each other a same distance from the end on either side with the jeweler saw halfway through and then we should be able to slot them together and shape it uh, and then we can after we solder it we can uh, file those ends down so it should be a, a pretty simple ring to make uh, but I think it'll look kind of cool and modern so um, in order to make that one I cut out a template out of a piece of paper and I slid it down to the size that I wanted it to be about a nine on my ring mandrel and then I marked where I wanted them to cut across if you can see I hope I have this in, in frame here you can see it kind of goes up in a in a pear shape and then that's where I where they met is where I marked it and then I just cut a slot on either side like that so they fit together so we're going to do the same thing with metal. We'll have to cut a little bit wider slot. And it may change the, because this is very two-dimensional and the silver I'm using is 18 gauge, it's thicker. Um, I may mark it a little bit closer to the end in order to make this about the same size. But I think I, I don't know, I haven't decided yet. But uh, we'll see when I, when I shape it around here, see how it looks. I think maybe just to get an idea where we should cut it to make sure that that's a good fit with this, Let's wrap it around the ring mandrel to start. And I can get kind of a general idea. I'm at the nine there. I think that'll work if we do it about like that. I think. So I think that's a good, good place to do. So I'm going to mark it, my marker here on one side. I think this side right here, roughly. And then I'll make a scratch there that goes 90 degrees along there. And then I'll measure how far down that is and do the same distance from this side on the opposite end. And then we'll cut it out with the saw. These flat nose pliers are great for straightening stuff out. But when you do it, just use it to hold the metal and use your fingers to, and you'll ding the metal up less. 
kind of need to find the center point so I know how far in to cut it. I think these were, when I cut this, it was just under 10, 10 uh, millimeters or a centimeter. So if I line it up like that, I should be able to find the center pretty easily. Same way here. Then I just line those up. It'll give me a good idea how far in I need to cut. Like that. So, um, because it's 18 gauge thickness, I'm going to have to cut a little bit wider than just a, a narrow spot. So, I'm going to widen that just a little bit. Not quite 18 though. Okay, so now I just got to cut those out to start with. So, let's go over to the sawing area. Welcome to my messy rotary tool sawing area. <laughs> All right, I think this is a number one on here. We'll try that out first. Yeah. pretty good so I think I'm gonna clean it up with the file and we'll see if we can get fit it together all right so I clean those up a little bit let's cross these over and see if we can get them to lock together okay so in order to get this to be pushing together I'm gonna bend it the opposite direction I think this will work we'll see so that it has a, a general tendency to be pushing that way See if we can use that springiness to pull it together better. Now it's starting to sit in there better. One trick you could try if you can't get it tight up against there, if uh, since we work hardened it, once you have it almost there, if you set it on the pad on its side like this and then heat it up to the point where it gets a little bit soft and squishy, uh, That'll settle down as you're kneeling it because the work hardening will be leaving and it'll kind of set down. I'm guessing gravity will pull it down. So you might be able to get it in there if it doesn't do this for you. Before we solder this though, I want to make sure these are nice and straight. Okay, so I'm going to cut some solder. If you've never seen my videos before, I use generally a hard silver sheet solder and a spray on flux called Mighty Flux. I'm going to be relatively generous with this solder here. Let's see if my plan works. It did settle down a little bit. <laughs> okay, so let's flex it. So normally I'd probably use pick soldering, but since we're doing a beginner video, put a little bit of solder up there. And then the trick when you're doing big stuff like this, even though there's solder over here and you think you should just focus there, with silver you got to get the entire piece up to temperature for that silver itself to melt the solder rather than the torch. You want the, the temperature of the metal to melt the solder. That it's connected to. And when you have this much mass, a big chunk of silver like this, it sometimes takes a little bit. I'll push that down if we need to. Let's throw another one on there.
See how I'm kind of actively avoiding the solder over here? That little bit above there is going to get hot enough as, you know, just by being in proximity to the flame, so I don't even have to focus up there probably. It also is conducting heat through the metal. I didn't get a good solder joint right there, so I'm going to add a little bit more. I think we did that time. Those seams you can clean up with your rotary tool, probably. Probably should have done this in advance. Save yourself some late filing. heat that up and throw that in the pickle and that one's pretty much done other than polishing and we'll get started on the next one. Alright so this is a piece of 18 gauge and I scribed out a circle that was the size of that. I, I find these little template things really handy sometimes when you just need to draw a circle quick and this is a little bit bigger than my disc cutter will cut out. Uh, for this one I'll cut it out with a disc cutter which I'll show you a bit. For this one, I'm just going to start out by cutting it. You could saw this if you were a fan of sawing. I'm a fan of sawing when I can't figure out a different way to do it. <laughs> I always avoided it when I first started doing this years ago because I wasn't very good at it. So it took me a long time to get a decent saw as well. Everybody asks about these snips. These are Fiskers, just Fiskers craft shears. 18 gauge is pushing the limits of what they'll do. Now we just need to do a little bit of filing. For this one, I was going to use 12 gauge square, which is what this is right here. This is the size I drew out, and that comes out to be about a nine or nine and a half. I'm making these kind of big rings. This one may be a little bit smaller, but um, I find it's good to have some rings on the high side and the low side because people who are shopping sometimes find uh, a ring that fits them, and they rarely ever find one, so they're just so overjoyed that they'll buy it. <laughs> Good technique. Have some way out of range rings. Okay, so I think I'm going to try and figure out how long this piece is. I'm just going to use this, which is a piece of silver laying around. It's easier to bend than the layer that I'm going to be using, so I kind of use that as a guide. Probably going to use um, my miter vice jig. This thing allows you to cut nice 45s in wire, so I'll just run it through there and cut nice 45s to get these corners once I get the size right. right, there. right there. If I use that as a guide to measure my pieces of thicker wire, it's a little bit easier to deal with. So 
since I'm doing two, of, I got to do two of these. So I'm gonna cut another one, same, same length. In order to get a consistency, I'm gonna straighten these out and make sure they're both the same length. That's pretty close, actually. Okay. So I'm gonna do this. Line it up to where it's just barely sticking through there. And we should be able to just file a nice 45 degree angle on there. If you haven't checked out my uh, playlists, that's a good way to, to navigate my uh, YouTube channel. If you hit the playlist tab, I've got things separated into a number of different ways, like ring projects or beginning projects, intermediate projects, advanced projects. So that might help you to find things that'll suit your level. I want to do this so the angle is pointing inwards towards the same side because I want the angle to be like this. Right? These things are super handy. I went uh, I don't know, 25 or 26 years without ever seeing one of these in my life. I just didn't know they existed. <laughs> my beginning students, uh, some of my beginning students from a long time ago, when I showed them this recently, they were like, why didn't you show us that back then? Because <laughs> filing a straight edge or a, a perfect angle is one of those things that is hard when you're a beginner. So, Although you can do without one of these just fine. They're just kind of handy for some situations. Bauhaus means uh, like builder house or house of builders in German, if I remember right. Which makes sense, they focus on like, shaping everyday objects into not only functional but beautiful art pieces. I think one of the more famous ones is a, there's a teapot that's all kind of hemispheres and half circles. It's very pleasing artistically. Okay, got these two guys. So, um, we need to bend them. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and bend them around the ring mandrel. Square wire has a tendency to twist on you because when you're bending it, you're stretching this outer edge and you're compressing this inner edge. And that's a lot of material to compress and stretch and it resists doing that so it tries to turn on you. Um, if you flip it over back and forth it keeps trying to turn in the opposite direction a little bit so it kind of keeps itself straight. If that makes sense. We need two more pieces of this to go across here. So let's straighten a little bit of this out. If I do it like this The reason I'm using the marker is because you can get a real precise mark then. If I make something I can scratch through so it's easier to see. Right there. Right there. And we're going to be going in that way, kind of. That way. Okay, I'm going to use this as a guide for the next one. Alright, it's time to solder them. I'm going to cut some fresh solder. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get a little flux on your tweezers, and then your solder will stick to it when you're trying to set it in places. <laughs> So like I said, it's a lot more mass down here than there is up here. So I spend a little more time at the beginning on this part. I make that pop a bit. Ideally you want them both to hit temperature about the same time.
I was just putting a little downward pressure because this part was sticking upwards a little bit. I think that might be about right. Okay, so next step is going to be soldering these two together kind of like this. I kind of like that solder joint to be really kind of not just a single point, but but uh, along the length for a little way, so I'm going to file this at an angle a bit. So you can see that I've got these two leaned against each other like that, and I'm going to put a little bit of solder right at the top. So let's flux it. Try not to knock it over. <laughs> Shift it a little on there. Pretty good sized piece of solder up there. I want both sides to reach 1450 degrees at about the same time. I'm going to heat the whole thing. I want this to be in there, but I want it to be balanced up above just a little bit. And so I think I'm going to use a little bit of that 12 gauge wire if I have a little scrap around. Okay, so I should be able to just solder it wherever these are in contact with that. So let's see how that goes. <laughs> what I really care about is that they're touching. The sides here, hopefully, I'm not catching them. Uh, you can nudge them up against there with your pick or with your tweezers. And then let's try and heat this whole thing pretty good. I'm just kind of making sure it's in contact with all the surfaces it needs to be in order to solder in. That's good, I didn't accidentally solder those in. But we got the basic style of ring that I was looking for. So now I'll just let that pickle, and then we'll work on the third one. So, because I was doing pretty much the same thing as before, I went ahead and did it. Um, as far as uh, filing these at angles. These ones here I had to kind of hand file because I wanted to match the curve of this circle that I made here out of the same stuff. This is 10 gauge square. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder it here and then I'm going to cut that out of there um, straight down along the line there so that it looks like it just merges and we'll get it all filed up and then we'll um, I'm going to knock a piece of copper out of this with my disc puncher and we'll place it in there and try and solder it in and see how it looks.
I'm just going to flip that over and make sure we have good penetration on our seam here. I might throw a little bit more on this side just to, to make sure we got a good solid solder joint there. That one looked a little less full than the other one. There's a lot of different things you could do with these. Like you could texture those discs, uh, the copper one or the silver one. Or you could put them at an angle or slope them or put multiple discs if you wanted to. There's a lot of variations you could probably do with this. So, but I need one that fits right, right in there. I'm thinking it's going to be that one probably. That's the one I estimated. So the way a disc cutter works is it's got a slot between it. You stick your piece of metal in there. And then I use a dead blow hammer to hit it really, really hard, especially when you're doing thick stuff like this. And so I'm not going to do it on the table because it's going to knock, it might knock my computer or my phone out of the holder that I have it in. And so I'm going to take this on the floor and hit it really hard with a hammer and try and get it in one hit. Okay, I'll be right back. It kind of gets stuck in there, but you can see how it just knocks a perfect little disc out. Those are kind of fun to have when you need to make a bunch of little discs. So I think before I solder this in, I'm going to shine it up a little bit because once it's in this spot here, it might be hard to polish it underneath there. So I'm going to try and get it relatively shiny first. At least no scratches. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I cut out that inside piece there with the saw. I kind of filed everything to clean it up a bit. I didn't do a thorough job or anything. But I got this relatively shined up too. And I'm going to mount this right in here. I think I'm going to use a piece of that uh, 10 gauge square to space it out on this one. A little piece right up there. You've never soldered copper to silver, it solders pretty similar. Oops. Knock that piece off. Mm. Overall, that's kind of cool, and I think it's a relatively simple ring to make. The only thing you have to do is a little sawing and a little uh, careful placement of uh, solder and everything, and then you're good to go. So let's pickle that, and I will clean all three of those up and take better pictures at the end. So, did all the polishing and stuff. We'll see how they look. There's that first one. The only thing was, uh, if I was to do it again, I might do a little bit even thicker sheet than this because I'm trying to polish into this area down here and get rid of any kind of fire scale that's there is difficult. And so I have a little bit that I couldn't quite get off. And then you start running into where it starts thinning the side a little bit, and then you then it starts to not look so good. So overall, I think it's a success. And I think next time I'd probably make it even better. So that was a good one. There's a second one. This one I particularly like. 
Um, the only challenge on this one as far as polishing really was you know underneath these these areas here and I didn't do a perfect job but I think it came out pretty good. Overall I think it's a cool ring. You know, very, very modern. <laughs> and then this one here. This one I like too. The copper really looks nice in this. It kind of sets things off for me. So I think that's a cool one. It's not really me but you know I still like it. <laughs> All right. Well, lots of variations possible with these kinds of things. Um, thanks for watching. Well, that was three simple beginner rings, kind of in the Bauhaus style. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did enjoy the content, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. And don't forget to um, check out the new merch I have on my merch store. There's, uh, If you like the little pickle time videos, there's a, a new couple of cups that have that uh, a silly looking pickle on it. And it says pickle time on it. So kind of fun novelty uh, check it out support the channel in that way or in another way if you want uh, if you check the video description down below there's uh, links to my patreon you can just buy me a coffee if you want to help out with supplies and uh, there's even a link to my website where you can check out the jewelry that I have for sale so thank you for stopping by I really appreciate your input and comments uh, and taking the time to view this uh, happy silversmithing take care